I think this channel is slowly morphing into Calculator Man. I say that because one week ago the topic of my video was Texas Instruments, and this week it's Casio. Two companies widely known for their calculators, so I think an explanation is in order. Well, last week, I think I may have entered into one of the smallest and lamest controversies ever. Let me read a comment from Dylan here. He says, for calculators, it's just an American thing, I assume. In the UK, where I'm from, Texas Instruments just doesn't exist, and Casio is the recommended calculator because everyone has it. The section saying that TI is automatically superior, that's at least how I saw it, kind of annoyed me, because it's assuming everyone has the same experiences. Except for that, love the video and love the channel, good job. That comment stuck out to me because it has good intent, he likes the video and the channel, I just said something that didn't sit well with him, and he wasn't the only one. Now, you can watch the entire video to see everything I said, I actually recommend it because it complements this video, but here's the section I think he was referring to. Sometimes in school you'd see someone with a Casio or some other brand, but they always regretted getting it. I mean, what are you doing if you're in school and you have a Casio? At least once every class, the teacher would have to stop everything and try to figure out whatever the Casio equivalent of his instructions were. Nothing against Casio, but you were holding up the class. Now, I hope this was clear, but but I was only speaking from personal experience. I'm sure many American viewers were able to relate. I didn't even purposely single out Casio like that. They were just one of the other brands I can think of. I didn't mean to imply Texas Instruments was superior, just much more common in my own experience. I know I sound offensive, and it's all kind of silly, but Dylan and a bunch of other commenters opened my eyes to Casio. Turns out, seemingly everywhere outside of North America, they are the standard for calculators. There were commenters coming forward from all over the globe just to tell me this. They were from Germany, France, Australia, Poland, the Netherlands, Thailand, Hong Kong, plenty from the UK. So I can appreciate the irony in this. Last week, I set out to inform everyone that Texas Instruments was bigger than you knew, and in return, I ended up learning that Casio was bigger than I knew. And if I was ignorant about Casio, there must be others. So let's fix that. Unlike Texas Instruments, Casio was built on calculators. It's a terrific story that dates back to post-World War II Japan. This is a Japanese company, by the way, so bear with me with some of the pronunciations. The man who started it was named Tadeo Casio. It began in 1946, not as a calculator business, but as a maker of parts for microscopes. The journey to become a calculator business is what I found impressive. Tadeo had a younger brother named Toshi making his name Toshio Kashio. He was a technician for telephones and telegraphs, but aspired to be an inventor. He made the bold decision to quit his job working on the telephones and join his brother's business to try and create a new product that can propel them forward. You have to respect that move, giving up the security of your skilled position to try and build a business with your brother, at the same time following your ambitions to become an inventor. That move was somewhat successful early on. The first thing he came up with was the Ubiwa pipe, which may look ridiculous at first, but hear me out. You have to smoke, right? I mean, it's the 1940s, but you also have to work, so why not do both at the same time? You can maintain your unhealthy habit and still have both hands free. Yeah, it still sounds kind of silly, but that wasn't its main purpose. See, in Japan, soon after World War II, many things were scarce, including cigarettes. This device allowed you to smoke it right down to the very bottom and waste none of it. Yeah, still kind of silly to me, but it did have purpose. And it did make them some money, money that they would use toward their next idea. Are you familiar with the state of calculators back then? It was a world of difference compared to today. They were mechanical, they had gears and you needed to crank a handle for it to work. At best, you'd find one that had a motor inside that would turn the gears for you, but even those were very uncommon in Japan. Their vision was to somehow make something that would cut out all of those gears and be completely electric. They spent the next seven years trying to make this happen. Eventually, they were joined by their other two brothers, named Yokio and Kazuo. Meaning, we now had four brothers, all working together, spending years trying to innovate this new kind of calculator, all while maintaining the microscope part of the business, since that was the part that was actually bringing in the money. When it comes to technology, seven years is a long time to work on something. Six years into their journey, they realized that solenoids weren't practical to mass 
produce, and they should pursue using relays instead. Now, from a technical standpoint, I have no idea what I just said, and unless you have an engineering background, you're probably right there with me. But we can certainly understand what it means to make a major change in your project. After six years of work, after one more year of work, they finally ended up completing their relay calculator. This is it. It was called the Casio 14A because it can solve problems up to 14 digits. When I first saw it, I thought that top part on the desk was the calculator, but no, it's the entire desk. Now, it wasn't the first relay calculator, but it was better than the others out there. It was considerably smaller, believe it or not. It was less affected by dust and therefore more durable. There were some other new design features, but I mean, this was it. This has been labeled the world's first compact all-electric calculator. It didn't take up an entire room, and it didn't contain gears, and at the time, that was the only calculator in existence you can say that about. After seven years of practically an entire family working on it, they accomplished exactly what they set out to do. Their new innovation is what got them off the ground. A company called Yukita Yoko made them their exclusive dealer, and their business was now centered around around making calculators. It all happened in 1957. That's when they established the Casio Computer Company, which is the company that we all know today. And if you're wondering why they chose the name Casio, it's because it's similar to their name, Casio, but more familiar sounding to the global population. Calculator and computer technology in general was rapidly improving during this time. By 1965, transistors were catching on as the new way to make calculators. They were smaller and faster, and nobody wanted the relay calculator anymore. That year, they introduced the 001, and what made it different from the existing competition is this one had a memory function. The very next year, they developed the similar, slightly improved Casio 101 for international sale, and the technology kept improving. In the early 70s, they made the Casio Mini. By the early 80s, they made the SL800, which was the size of a credit card. All of them were big hits. Now, this was a rapidly growing market, especially in the United States, and everyone was trying to get in on it, competing to make them smaller and cheaper, but Casio was one of the few companies to emerge. Obviously, they still sell them today, they're still a major part of their business, and evidently are the standard in many countries around the world. That covers their involvement in calculators fairly well, but they go much deeper than that. They are all over the consumer electronics market. In 1974, they introduced the Casiotron, and have made digital watches ever since. In 1983, they introduced the G-Shock, the shock-resistant, toughest watch of all time, on top of a ton of other models, including some dress watches that are pretty snazzy. And a Casio. I can go on about these for a while, but for now, just know that they're big in that industry. In addition to calculators and watches, keyboards. Not computer keyboards, but electronic musical keyboards. In 1980, they introduced the Casio Tone 201, targeted toward beginners or people who don't want to spend much money on a piano, and they've made keyboards ever since. Electronic instruments became really big in the United States throughout the 1980s, and by the end of that decade, over half of all of them were sold by Casio. These are probably the three products that they're most known for today, but they make everything. Their sales are split into three segments. Last year, 85% of all sales came from their consumer segment. That includes the three products I've already mentioned, watches, calculators, and musical instruments, in addition to electronic dictionaries, label printers, digital cameras, and other wrist devices, among other things. They don't provide a breakdown any more detailed than this, but they do disclose that half of all their sales came from watches, so that would easily be their most successful product. 12.4% of sales came from their system equipment segment, which includes handheld terminals, cash registers, data projectors, and office computers, among other things. And then the third segment is only 2.7% of their sales and includes everything else. The point here is, if it's electronic, you shouldn't be surprised to learn that it's made by Casio. And then, going by region, they sell more in Japan than anywhere else, which probably isn't surprising. That's followed by the rest of Asia, those two combined make up over half their sales. Europe accounts for 15%, and North America is 13%. So, everyone from Europe commenting about how widespread Casio is over there, that's only 15% of their sales. So, let me ask everyone a question. I imagine the answer would be different depending on where you're from and how old you are, but 
What do you most associate with Casio? If I were to tell you that I just went out and bought a Casio, what would you think I just bought? I would have pictured some kind of electronic keyboard, but then watches are their most popular product, so maybe you picture that? But it sure seems like a lot of students from outside of the United States would say calculators. I think that speaks to their success in diversifying. Here we have a company that got their start through their innovations to the calculator, yet today, I can't confidently say how you would know them. I do want to point out that this obviously started as a family company and has been that way ever since. When they were first established in 1957, they made their father president. Three years later, Tadeo took over and stayed in charge until 1988. After that, Kazuo, one of the other brothers, was put in charge and he stayed in that position until June of 2018. And his replacement and current president is his son, Kazuhiro. Let me know in the comments, which calculator company should I talk about next week? Alright, alright, no more calculator videos. For a while. What I really want to know, is Casio bigger than you thought it was? Because that was the case for me. I was surprised to learn the popularity of their calculators internationally, so thanks for letting me know about that. Also, the story of the Casio brothers and how they spent seven years making that relay calculator is worth hearing. Staying dedicated for such a long period of time with some major setbacks along the way, but they did it. If they hadn't, Casio wouldn't exist today. It never would have existed. So if you have any thoughts about that or anything else pertaining to Casio or calculators or watches or electronic keyboards or all the other stuff they made, leave them in the comments. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.